Vamos jogo sério. From the camera. Let's see, let's try the microphone. Hello, 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 hello. Testing audio again. Round two. See if hello, this is any better. Testing audio again. Sweet. All right, we are good on better. Twitch and Testing we are again. good Sweet. on ZBrush Live. Dope. All right. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is A Joker. No, my name is uh, Eamon Akhtar. I'm a 3D artist in LA and I do a lot of 3D printing. So I tend to 3D print a costume every year. This is the Joker mask I was working on in my past two streams. Nick Bowen, thank you. I hear you. Sweet. Audio is good. Thank you for confirming Eugene. All right, so let's get this uh, zebra stream on the way. All right, so I just uh, commented on Restream. I'll be checking the chat log here. So you can type in YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitch, uh, all that, and I'll be able to see and respond. Just double check everything's working well. Cool, Twitch is good, ZBrush Live is good. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Move this up so you guys can see me, and maybe the audio is a little bit better with the mic here. So my name is Eamon Akhtar. I'm a 3D artist here in LA, and I uh, stream for ZBrush Live, which is why you guys are here. I've been doing a lot of 3D printing for the past uh, five years here in LA, large-scale stuff, small-scale stuff. So uh, you can see more of my work at Eamon3D.com. And let's see here. Latest project is Fungusaurs. Uh, I've been working on this for a few years now with my wife Fa. Uh, she's the art director for the project and I'm doing development. We've come up with our own line of uh, dinosaur mushroom hybrid creatures that we're developing into an IP so we can make uh, toys, games, and animation with them. So we've got the toys already on sale. We take them around to take photos. We've got an AR game in development. Let's see if Sketchfab cooperates right now. There it goes. So those are the little fungusaurs. If you'd like to support that project, you can follow us on Instagram at fungusaurs. And check out all the progress on these critters. There's the Instagram at fungusaurs. And like I said, I'm a presenter for ZBrush Live, so every week or so I do some sculpts and show you guys my process. Um, there's a lot of awesome artists on here, Shane Olson, Ashley Adams, uh, Tomas Wittelbach if you're into jewelry. Uh, you can go to pixelogic.com ZBrush Live presenters to check out everyone's stuff. And if you scroll down to my name right there, you can see some more of my work. So there's the Fungusaurs, the mystery box toys that I developed with my wife. There's a costume. This is the first 3D printed costume I made actually for uh, 3D World magazine. All these parts are 3D printed. Jewelry by Igor Nesevich. Uh, some of these larger pieces were printed by Shapeways. And then the smaller stuff I printed on my Form 1 Plus at the time. And I do a lot of character development stuff. So I've been in the animation, toys, and games, and VFX industry bouncing around for about a decade now. So that's kind of my bag. So if you go to Pixelogic ZBrush and my name, you can see all of the previous videos that I've done. So there's some stuff on articulation. There's some stuff on molding casting. Um, there's different masks. There's more development on my Fungusaurs IP. So you can see how I'm going about pitching an IP here in LA. And uh, I made the Joker mask and uh, a headdress for my friend Marco. So there's two projects that I'll be showing, and I do a little bit of show and tell in the beginning of my streams, and then we'll get into a bit of sculpting. All right, so let's see. Questions, questions, cool. 
All right, so we got some questions already. Um, nice mask. Thank you, Eli. Lead Tease on uh, Twitch is saying, what's the cost of printing the mask? So this mask that I'm wearing, put it back on. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so this mask, and I'll go over it, uh, how I built it and all that just shortly. But the jaw opens. There's a bit of a... But I, I actually miscalculated the size of my chin. I was hoping I'd be able to open my mouth. and But I need to create some padding for my chin there. Uh, this mask, I think, was probably on the order of around $15 to print. It's very cheap because I printed it in FDM. Um, I printed it on the Raise 3D N2 Plus here. This printer is about $3,500, but it gives you the scale that you could go for really big prints in one go. So the jaw was printed separately, and then the head was printed separately so that they could hinge. And the printer, um, it's the standard FDM printer. You can do PLA and ABS prints on it, but you can do it pretty cheap. So Litis, to answer your question, it's about 15 bucks to print because that's the cost of a spool. And then we painted it mostly actually all done painting by my wife uh, she did all the painting yesterday so I'm pretty stoked with how this came out uh, it's attached in the back with just a strap uh, elastic band kind of thing uh, and then there is hinges on the inside so I just put like a, a chopstick in the hinge and then glued it in place and there's a spring on the inside so I spring loaded it so that every time I open them out it'll automatically close it and the idea was that I'm going to be able to put my chin here, but I miscalculated. Like, my chin is not this big, so I need to create some padding in here. And that's kind of what I'll be doing a little bit of today and see if I can get it printed in order to work for tonight. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Grim Reaper saying, so that was printed using filament? Yes, so that was printed using a filament, Overture filament uh, from Amazon. Um, white because I'm going to paint it. I painted, uh, file painted it white this morning, last night, and uh, on top of the white filament. And you can see this inside is completely not painted. So all of this is the color of the filament. And I don't know how much you can see when you zoom in. You do see a little bit of build lines, but it's pretty good. Pretty clean, actually. Yeah, you can see some build lines, like on the nose there. And if I really cared about completely getting rid of the build lines I could do some sort of resin coating on it before I uh, painted before Fa painted but uh, it wasn't necessary I, I, with these masks they're so cheap and do they you do them so quickly that it's fun you can come up with your own custom stuff so let's uh, see that mask and like how I went into it so if you go to my previous videos and click on that one spring in it so that Okay. So I had previously done a mask of Hector from Coco the movie for my friend Sean, and he did a great job of actually making a like a balaclava that he could stitch it onto the jaw and be able to move it around. And so that kind of got me inspired to figure out a way to do some spring loading to get this, you know, mouth working. And first time doing it, so there's always kinks that need to be worked out. So I had a scan of my face and I started with the Hector mask because I already had the scan uh, at the correct scale and then the mask I just started sculpting it in place. And I usually start with the symmetry turned on in ZBrush and focus only on the large big shapes until I get to a point where I can start detailing. And I created teeth for an insert mesh brush and put a bunch of the teeth in there. then did a little bit of painting so I could uh, visualize what it would start to look like and we're actually not far off it's pretty much exactly how I imagined it <clears throat> so I wasn't able to show you guys the engineering of it uh, in ZBrush last time because uh, in my last stream I was just sculpting it so I'll start there let me pop open in ZBrush Ah. 
All right, cool. Let me also move this over to the other side. So usually the first thing I do is cut the range away, double the size of my canvas, click AA half, and that just gives me a clean canvas that I can work on and show you stuff. AA half, make sure it's anti-aliased. Okay, I'm going to go into, where was it, Joker mask, there it is. Okay, great. Let's put on some music. Let me know if the music gets too loud and starts interfering with uh, if you can hear me or not. Okay. So, here's the Joker mask. Like I said, built on top of a scan of my head. This was done using 3D MD scanners pretty quickly. In like a nanosecond at a SIGGRAPH Expo, they just gave me the scan. And here's the top part of the mask. So you can see how the hinge was done here. Hide that. the music down a bit okay so the hinge is basically straightforward I boolean booleaned it out there's a I don't know what to call it a cylinder that is there uh, keeping the jaw in place and both the jaw and the upper part of the mask have like a little protrusion that I could put a spring around so the spring basically goes here, and let me hide half this mask, turn on double sided, maybe a bit more, and a tad more. There we go. So you can see how there is protrusion sticking out of both ends that I put a spring onto. And so the spring is compressing inside there between these two points right there and right there and this hinge keeps it in place so that way I can actually open and close the mask you can actually even hear it a little bit so I might actually WD-40 it so that there's uh, less sound coming out but that's the basics of the engineering and then I decimated it so this is about 129,000 polys this one's 57,000 polys so relatively low poly uh, once decimated, all one you know solid airtight mesh. And the mistake I made is that I created too much space right here in the chin cavity. So my chin, which was supposed to rest on the bottom, it doesn't. There's a lot of space right there. And maybe I could have guessed it because of the scan here. Let's see. See if I can hide some stuff here. Double side that. So hard to guess because according to the scan, my chin is basically right there. But when it actually did print out, there's a lot of space under here. Like I could stick at least like my fingers twice in a row above that chin. So that's what I'm going to do a bit today. I'm going to create a bit of a padding here for the chin and I'll 3D print that out so I can you know, glue it into the place in the mask and hopefully the mask will function fully. Like when I open my mouth, the mask will also open. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that today. And I'll show you the other project that I did in my other stream. That was last week's stream.
pop that over. Okay. So that was episode 49. Episode 50, I showed a different project. So we built a cowl. Let's see. So basically, a snake head cowl is what I was going for. And I came up with a base mesh in Maya, just a you know basic proportions blocking in of a head and a shoulders. And then I move forward with coming up with a design that we would turn into a snake head cowl, like a, a snake wizard kind of thing. You know, the eyes going in place, started doing some scales, figuring out the flow of the mask, deciding whether or not to add teeth. And some doing some basic texturing around. So this was for my friend Marco who wants to be a snake wizard for Halloween. And so we printed that as well. So I'll show you how that turned out. Pop it to ZBrush first. Load it up. Pop it into some ZBrush. What are you all doing for Halloween? Or do you celebrate Halloween? Or is it even Halloween where you're at? I don't know if you guys are tuning in from halfway around the world and it's already uh, November 1st. Anyone have any fun plans tonight? Just let me know in the chat log. Alright, let's see this with a bit of a sculpty material. Actually, let's see this with something cooler. Like... Yeah, there you go. Fatmiri is gray. That one's really going to show off the features of this mask a bit better. So this is the finished cowl. I sculpted in a lot more scales. And pretty much still like a one-day project. And I keyed it. So I split the mask in half and keyed one part to be basically the male and the other part to be the female where the key would go into it and it would still be pretty comfortable to wear. So basically just a two-piece print and this was all printed in one go on my Race 3 d the big printer here, um, in two parts. So at first I printed this side, then I printed this side and I can show you what those look like too now. Let me pop this open a bit. So here we are. Here's the prints of the snake wizard cowl. All done on the Race 3D N2 Plus also. I find it really great to print uh, in FDM for prototyping, especially large stuff because it's cheap. So this was basically about like, you know, 30 bucks or so because it used two spools of filament. And it's a big print. So just by comparison to the Joker mask, let's see if I can put this down. So it's about like volume wise the same as the Joker mask. Let me go over this way. Maybe even like slightly larger and printed in two pieces. So the range you can do with 3D printing, that's why I call this uh, stream 3D printing ideas to reality because neither of these things existed a couple weeks ago and now they're real physical items that can be worn and interacted with. So that's really why I enjoy it so much and you can you can do as well as I. I mean it's nothing that is extremely complicated it's just you have to understand the workflows and processes and then think like an engineer a bit and there's always problems so I'm gonna show you some of the problems that happen in the stream and uh, how I go about solving them. So this is basically designed to go over the head let's see if I can put it on sort of like that Hard to tell with the lighting the way it is in this room. But this has not been glued on yet. It's just kind of hanging on. And we're going to finish the mask today by uh, epoxying it together so the key is closed and then filling in some space. So 
there was an issue on printing this out uh, that caused it to slide. I don't know how else to just explain it, but uh, there's these little gaps that need to be filled in. So you can see the gaps in the webcam there. And so even the key, even, even though the key is pretty perfect, uh, the print when it was actually printing, let's see, because I printed it like this, basically it started printing just fine up till here and then it jumped a little bit to the side. And so what that did is it created some lines here, uh, hard to show you, there. You see those lines there, like that one right there? So that line, and basically by shifting all of it a little bit, it also shifted the key and like the placement of it all. So there's a little bit of like stuff to fix. You can actually see it a bit better on this side. So there's some shifting here too, which caused some ridging. And shifting can happen in 3D printing. There's no real way to completely avoid it, but I could lube up the, uh, the rods a bit more and that would help, uh, I'm hoping. So, but basically I'm just gonna sand it down a bit and put these two pieces together and epoxy them to fit. And then I might fill in the gap with a bit of a, like a hot glue and then spray paint it all. And so it'll be like a finished thing. So if you're interested in 3D printing, please get into it. It's really fun and really cool, but it's also not a one click solution right now. There's always problems. There's always stuff that needs to be fixed and it's very much a craft solution at the moment. So you have to be a craftsman and think like an engineer. It's more than just sculpting and 3D modeling. It's also physically working that stuff in real life once it comes out of the printer. I think I can try to explain how the shift happens or what happens when there's a shift. So this is decimated, so it might be a bit harder to show, but I'll try it anyways. So when a shift happens, a print that started out there and there's a shift, you can see how there it creates like ledges like that, it ruins the keys. A lot of problems can come up when there's a shift in the printer. And this happens when the printer just simply catches and moves everything a little bit. Um, it's a problem unique to FDM printers that doesn't happen in SLA printers as much, the resin printers. But uh, some uh, fine tuning will resolve that issue, I'm hoping. And it hasn't actually happened in most of the prints I've been doing. It didn't happen on the Joker mask. It just happened on both sides of this one. So I'm not sure what caused it. Maybe it was just too many supports at the bottom. Uh, when I set it up, usually I try to make prints, uh, you know, completely flat at the bottom, at the base, so that they have uh, something to build off of. And this was just all supported, so maybe that's why it's shifted. Let me see if y'all have any questions going on the restream. Grim Reaper saying, I think you should have cleaned up the scan mesh a bit. Possibly. Um, you don't really need to have like a beautiful scan in order to build on top of it. Uh, I wasn't going for a portrait of my face, just functional things to build new stuff. Grim Reaper saying, still Halloween here. Nice. October Burn saying, anyone else suffer from procrastination? Everyone. I mean, I know I don't do anything without a deadline. So I force myself uh, deadlines by telling people like yourselves, I'm gonna be doing something by X date. And then I have to do it to try to pull it off. Uh, Daya Bhardwaj on uh, Twitch, can you give me feedback on my work? Sure, drop a link to it in the Twitch chat and I'll uh, take a look. All right, so I'm pretty satisfied with how uh, these uh, pieces came together. But what we're going to be doing in stream today is doing a bit of fixing. Specifically, I'm going to print a little bit of a, a chin space here uh, for my jaw. And I'm going to create a prop for my wife. She wants to be a Oktoberfest zombie. So I'm going to make her a little pretzel. And I'll see if I can make it out of brains or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. 
Brains doesn't make sense. Maybe intestines? Intestines? How do you guys say it? Intestines or intestines? Just Googling intestines on the other uh, screen. Not a very safe Google. But also now one of the worst things I've Googled. See, also Googling pretzel. So that'll be the second part of the project. Making a pretzel like that. And I think this should be a relatively quick print that should be done within the day. And a simple, straightforward model. All right, so let's start with uh, part one of the project first. Okay, let me pop over to my desktop, the Joker mask. There it is. And let's open the Idea Maker file. This is the file that was actually the prints. So I think this is the mask bottom I want to open. Grim Reaper said intestines is how it's pronounced. And <laughs> cool, intestine works. Um, Eris Vanafilia on Twitch says, Where does Bretzel come from? I'm not sure. Um, I always thought of it as a German thing. But let's see. In the, yeah, place of origin, Germany. It's fitting. Sounds German. Bretzel. All right. So this is Idea Maker. This is the 3D print prep software for the Race 3D. Um, FDM printers uh, can come with their own software, just like uh, Formlabs ships with uh, the preform software for SLA printing. And so here's the Idea Maker FDM software, and you can see how there was a bunch of supports here at the bottom, uh, just to make sure it would go. And click on the actual model itself. So scale says 100%. So I'm not sure if I did anything to it uh, when I exported it out, uh, but I can try. Let's see. Try to figure it out. Oh. Let's go into ZBrush. Usually when I export these things out, I merge visible. So I merge the top and the bottom together and I export it out together and then I separate in Idea Maker or something else like Mesh Mixer. I'm just trying to retrace my steps because I did this two or three weeks ago, how I put it together uh, scale wise. Because if I print it with the wrong scale, there's no point. You know, the easiest way actually is to take this jaw because I know this is at the correct scale. I'm going to go support, remove support, or clear. Let's rotate this 90 degrees. It's kind of vertical. And we'll export this model as an STL. Joker jaw export one. Let's see if we can bring that into ZBrush and work backwards. So in ZBrush, if you want to bring in an STL file, it doesn't work from tool import. You have to go under Z plugin import STL file. And I'm going to scroll over to my Joker scene. And the file that I just exported was Joker jaw export draw that out and we can do a test so 
I'm going to update size ratios in millimeters. Let's see, this one sounds right. And let's test it. I'm going to export it out of here in ZBrush. Um, let's export as an STL and make sure that our exporting is working back and forth between the two different software. This is the, t the technical thing. You always want to make sure that it's working. So let's do export two this time. And now I'll open that one in Idea Maker. All right, so now I can see that the scale is correct. This is the size I printed it before. So now if I make any adjustments to the chin here or um, any fitting in, then uh, filling in, then it'll, uh, it'll be the right size. Okay, so then I'm going to pop over to ZBrush and I need to figure out how much space I want to fill in on this chin. Usually with 3D printing, the first prototype isn't good. You always need to do multiples. And I'll put this on and try to see if I can figure it out. Kind of worked out because my hair was already greenish to begin with. I think this mask looks pretty good. All right, so what I'm doing right now is just measuring with my fingers. There's at least two stacked finger space uh, from the bottom of the mask to my chin. And the actual bottom, this space here that I thought would be enough for my chin to be on, there's not enough space. So I actually need to somehow pull this back further. So from here to like about there. So I need to basically add some thickness and some distance. Measuring all the way to the top, to the sides. The whole idea is making that jaw movement. When I open my mouth, it actually opens its mouth a lot more uh, user friendly. So basically increasing the user experience by better spring loading. And this is good to do with uh, a mask, something that you want to be functional. So the easiest way to do this is I'm going to go to my mesh here and right now it's decimated so I'll start by dynameshing it so it'll go from 57,000 more resolution to about 400,000 but at least now it's like solid and I can start by maybe dropping an insert primitive insert mesh sphere on there We'll draw it on right in the center. Split unmasked points so it's on its own layer. And with symmetry on, I'm just going to move it to shape the way I want. So we're extending the bottom so there's more chin rest so it functions better. And we're basically trying to fill this in. And I'll glue this on to the inside of the mask. But right now you'll notice that this sphere is going through a lot of my mask. So if I hide half of this, 
hide half. You'll notice this sphere isn't really perfect. It's not reaching all the way to the bottom and if it does, it goes right through the bottom. And we don't want that. So we're going to boolean cut the jaw from this, uh, you know, filling in piece once uh, we get that far. I want to make sure I don't take away too much space. And you go to geometry, divide, delete lower, see that again. And we can actually do it right now. We can bring this mesh below our mesh, set it to be a cutter, and go to render booleans, live boolean. And what this will do is it will cut it out and it will show me the cutting out. So it's going from basically there to there. So that's the shape we'd be 3D printing. And I dig that, and I dig that ZBrush can like build on prototypes just like this. So not the sexiest model, but this is exactly what we need in order to make it work properly. Now even though this is symmetrical, I want to make sure that I'm using every inch of space in there so that when it does cut, cuts it evenly on both sides. And order of operations really matters in this. So the where your subtool is directly affects what's going to get booleaned. So right now the jaw is here, the boolean cutter. So if I move another jaw that's not a cutter at the bottom, this boolean won't affect it. It only affects what's above. So I can see both of my meshes at the same time then. So booleans can be really powerful in ZBrush. They actually work, which is great. I mean, you know, 3D people have been trying to get booleans to work well since the 80s and 90s. And I always tried to use them in Maya, but they were just they just didn't work. All right, so something like that I think would be perfect. It would give my chin something to rest on and fingers crossed it would work. So that's basically what we're looking to print. And I might try to smooth out the front a bit as well. All right, yeah. So any questions about this process? Does this make pretty good sense? It's pretty straightforward. Let's see, there we go.
Okay, cool. Everyone seems to be following. What are you all working on? Anything interesting? Anything fun? Let's see. Yvonne X is saying, uh, when is it good to use perspective mode? So perspective mode is that button right there that you guys can't even see. It's like the off your screen and the UI. In draw, you can see perspective right there. And what perspective does is it basically changes your camera's focal length so you can see a bit better. And it, it isn't doing the focal length here, but it's basically the effect that it does. So it goes from a flat orthographic view to kind of like seeing it with camera perspective. Uh, it's great to have on, but I tend to turn it off when I'm working on engineering kind of matters because um, when you're sculpting, you're, see, you're, you're basically sculpting what you see. And I, I don't, I don't want to see uh, that when I'm sculpting. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna clip a little bit. Let's see what's happening. Clip that piece a little bit. All right, a bit sharp, but this ledge there is actually going to help me keep it in place as I glue it on. Okay, cool. So that should help me fix the, the chin and, and be able to print. Just in case I'm going to reduce the space. Smidge. Okay, enough fooling around with that. I'm going to duplicate it. Actually yeah and merge down so there's two ways to do a boolean cut you can merge down onto the cutter and then dynamesh that's one way or the other way is to have your mesh selected and then go to booleans in the tool menu make boolean mesh that's a bit better and i can append that on And there we go. There's my final Boolean mesh. It's been cut out. You can see the topologies actually tried to maintain what we had and what we got from the Boolean cut. So what I want to do first is just DynaMesh this so it's all unified. Press Control W to sort out the groups there. I'll just tap the edge with the smooth brush. Dynamesh again. And I actually don't need much resolution. So when I don't need much resolution, I, I work with lower resolution. Smoothing the bottom of this a bit more. Dynameshing. All right, so this piece is now ready. It's a bit high in uh, poly count. Doesn't need 75k poly, so I'll decimate it down. Export, and then that should be good. Decimate it. Now it's 15k polys, and since our scene scale is correct, I should just be able to export this file and see what happens. So let's call this Joker Jaw Fix One. And see what it does. I'm gonna go to my idea maker scene with the jaw that I imported. There it is. It's looking a bit large to me. And it could be because it uh, exported uh, the size based on my jaw size. Could be. Feels a bit large. Let's try again. 
but in ZBrush I'll make sure that my size ratios are updated to that and then export Joker Jaw Fix 2 import so that's feeling a lot better in terms of size and scale but if I really want to be sure that it's going to line up and match perfectly uh, what I want to do is try to export the pieces together so I'll go into ZBrush I'll click on my jaw do I have the version of the jaw that is decimated still? Should have it in history. Eh, not there. There we go. Turn that jaw on, turn this piece on. Update size ratios for the jaw itself and in our settings for export options I can say not just selected but all the ones that are visible so that means every one uh, every subtool with the eyeball on will get exported and it'll try to line up the scale with the first object that I selected so then I'll click export STL Joker jaw fixes just so I can be very clear what it is You know what? No. Let me change the names of it here. Jaw fix export. Jaw fix export two. And I'll have it when my when I do the export. I'll have it choose the name, so it'll use the subtool name as the file name. And it'll only export the visible ones. So now when I go into Idea Maker and I test them out, they should be perfectly lined up. So Joker Jaw Fix 1 and 2. So there's the 1. There's the 2. Nope. Selecting the wrong parts. Let's see. Here we go. Joker Jaw Export 1 and 2. So not fix, but export. But that actually goes to demonstrate a point. You gotta make sure that your naming conventions on point. Here, jaw fix export one and two. Sheesh, I'm a mess. So there's the jaw, and there's the little thing, little insert that fits in. So now I know it's for sure the right scale. And test it against that fix two that I had come. Yeah, so it's about the same size. neat okay so this one's ready to print I think I may actually export this and print this out of my form labs printer uh, while I print the pretzel on this printer so one thing I like about uh, idea maker is that it lets you export at the right uh, size and it lets you choose the to export as an STL I wish preform let me export as an STL Just some technical mumbo jumbo. <clears throat> I'm gonna change this, call it for form. And I'll show you guys setting up in preform as well. <clears throat> hey 
Eddie six six nine nine saying I'm carving a pumpkin. And do you know how I can import normal map for an OBJ file that I bought in ZBrush? <coughs> so I don't know a way to use normal maps to change your sculpt in ZBrush. I think there might be a way, but I, I don't know what that is. Uh, but I can show you how to import it to a normal map. Yeah, like the basics of it, sure. Uh, what is technical mumbo jumbo? Uh, it's just means that uh, I'm spouting technical words that don't really mean much unless you know what I'm saying. It's mumbo jumbo. Alright, so this is Preform, the print prep software for my Formlabs machines. I have a couple of Form 2s. Those are the orange machines that you see in the back there, SLA printers, uh, meaning they print in resin. So they print, um, they can print pretty fast. I'm going to try actually a new material that I just got called draft material. And draft is supposed to be able to print even faster, and it can do up to 300 micron speed. And I've never printed in draft, so I'm excited to try it out. I'm going to bring in my mesh. So I have to find the file that was labeled for form. Open that up. There we go. And printing for... Uh, in printing in resin, you want to make sure that you have... Uh, supports. So I'm going to add some supports onto here. But first I'm just going to... Uh, figure out the best orientation. Now if I print this vertically that's probably better orientation wise but it's going to take longer because it's vertical. So since I want this to happen quickly I'm going to print it kind of like that maybe. No, maybe like this. It'll require less supports that way. Okay, now I'll click on the supports button and click auto generate with density let's change that from 1 to 0 0.7 touch point size from 1 to 0 0.7 that should be good auto generate and it'll do it for me <clears throat> while this is generating supports I can uh, show you how to import in a normal map eddy so the way it works is you import it in just like any other texture. So you go to your texture palette, you go to import, and let's say I've got this image, sure. So there's this image and it's brought in as a texture. Now I can go to whatever model I have under tool and normal map, and then I can select that texture. So I can apply that normal map just by bringing in the texture. So you import the normal map just like you would any other texture, and then in normal map you select it uh, for your mesh. And then it'll work if you have a UV map. I don't even have a UV map on these so it won't work. But that's basically how you import in a normal map. Alright, here we go. Supports have been generated over here. Bit many, but let's see. Let's see what uh, it says. So there's a little bit of red area here, which is indicative of not enough supports. So I'll add in a few more, just to make sure this prints in one go. I'm not really too concerned with the amount of supports or support cleanup, because I'll just very quickly take them uh, off and uh, put on new ones. All right, so that should do the trick, throwing in some extra ones. Click apply and all that red should disappear. Yep, plenty of supports now. So this is ready to print. My chin will be there so it'll be smooth. All of that area, I'll just very quickly remove the supports and drop it on. Save this. Still a bit of red down there. Let me adjust that and make sure that there isn't any. Not sure why it sees so much red. Alright, that should be.
plenty overkill for it now. Send it to the printer and see how long it says it's going to take. Says printer is disconnected, so I'll have to turn it on. Give me a second. Hmm. Apologies for the delay. Just trying to get it, get the uh, printers connected to the Wi-Fi. So we just set up a new uh, Wi-Fi modem yesterday, so the printers actually can't find it. Uh, uh, but uh, the point is, if it were to connect, I just basically click on that printer, click send, and it would upload that file, and then we would get started printing. I'll do this after the stream. No need to bore you guys with the tech. Uh, we can get back into some ZBrush and sculpt uh, the other part of the costume for today uh, for my wife, who wants to be a... Oktoberfest zombie, so I'm going to sculpt her a little pretzel. Now I might as well do it in this scene because I kind of have a sense of how big things are in this scene. So I'm going to duplicate that jaw fix. 
Dynamesh it. Maybe a little less resolution to start. And let's start making a pretzel. So I could start making a pretzel out of this one object. Just basically reshaping it into a pretzel shape. Or I could just use it as a base and then build my pretzel on top of it. Okay, so there's my base. And what I can do is use my, well, there's a million different ways to do it. Let's try the simplest. Samuel Vision saying, never seen a resin printer in action. Totally interested in seeing this. Uh, I wish I could show you, but basically um, the Wi-Fi is giving me trouble. Um, the, the setup of a resin print is the same as the setup of any other print. You get your model in, you add your supports, you pick your orientation, and then you click print. If you're interested in resin 3D printing, uh, you should check out uh, the Form Labs machines. There's a, a new one out called the Form 3 now. You can check out the videos there. And you can see kind of what it does. And how it works. So it bounces the laser around and that laser, wherever it hits the resin, it solidifies it. And this one is called low force stereolithography. So it uses like a little bit of rubber, I believe, to push up. And so it requires, you know, it's completely edge to edge. Gives you notifications of when the prints are done. You can do dental stuff and you can do big prints. Uh, they have a new printer that they're going to be launching, not out yet, called the Form 3L. That's the one I want because it's massive. Look at that. It's a beautiful resin printer. But I believe these aren't out for sale just yet. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, cheaper ones too. If you want to if you're just getting started in printing, don't go for like a 3500 one. Go for a cheaper one. Grim Reaper saying, why don't I have the printers hardwired to the PC via USB? Um, it's basically because it's a bit far away. It's like eight feet away. Um, and I keep moving the printers around. So ideally, Wi-Fi is better. So then I can solve that problem like within you know an hour after the stream. All right, so I'm making a pretzel next. And the way I'm going to do it, or the way I'm going to try to do it first, is just to create the shape we can do is the curve tube snap and the curve tube snap will let me basically create a curve onto the mesh here so I think the best way to do it is to do it without any uh, symmetry on just to have a little bit more asymmetry going I'm going to create the shape of a pretzel and see if I can get the shape right that's basically the shape of a pretzel you know kind of done in one go and now we can tweak it a bit so I'm going to drop the selection and I'll switch to my move topological brush and this should let me only sculpt the topology that I want to sculpt so if I select these vertices it'll only move those vertices it's a great way in ZBrush to sculpt meshes that are, you know, it's all the same mesh. It's just interwoven on top of each other. Now, a basic pretzel is a bit simple, and I don't want it to be just so basic, so I'm going to try to see if I can make it more interesting by let's see if we can make some uh the pretzel like like an intestine or intestine intestine i think that's what we had decided earlier
I don't even know if it's pretzel or bretzel, like with the B. What is m more accurate? Do we have any Germans watching the stream today? Alright, there we go. So there's our basic bretzel. I don't know why I said it like that. That's more of a Russian accent than a German accent. Accents are fun though. I'm gonna divide a few times. Let's see. Let me split my sub tools, split unmasked points. Then I'll divide it. I'll divide smoothly. Delete lower. And I can keep using my topology brush and it should still work well. Make sure that you guys can see the screen. You can. Good. Grim Reaper saying, uh, bet that'll be rather expensive. Resin printers, yeah. The bigger ones can get very expensive. And printing in resin can get expensive at that scale. But you can't beat the resolution that you can get. Alright, now that I've got the base shape for this pretzel, I'm going to duplicate my mesh here. And we'll see if we can do something to it, like, just make it a bit more interesting. So earlier I was googling intestines, and we can see kind of like the shape language uh, of what intestines look like. So I can try to replicate a bit of that. Um, don't want to keep googling this because it's a bit of a scary Google, so I'll do it on my other screen. Spare you guys, guys and gals, from looking at the intestines. But basically, I want to make this pretzel look a bit gross. How do I do that? Step one is gathering good reference. Still looking for reference. Want to find like the the right surface texture that I'm trying to create. I think I'm just gonna start by damp standarding. Creating a lot of bridges. This is already looking a bit more intestiny, which is good. Make sure I get those ridges all the way around. The whole point of 3D is making sure this looks good from multiple angles. And again, this is all about 3D printing ideas to reality. So I don't really endorse a specific 3D printer or price range. It's more about the fact that with 3D printers, you can create your reality. 
create real stuff. That feeling of uh, seeing stuff uh, appear that just was in your head and now it's real, that's still pretty magical for me. Sculpting these ridges, that'll be step one. Then I think I'll do some inflating. Might add a little bit of uh, wonkiness here and there to give it that feeling of intestinage. I think the paint is really what's going to sell this, just making it look more pinky and orangey rather than uh, the expected brown with the salt on it. trying something out seeing like if we tweak one of the ends but nah just makes it less recognizable let's inflate now or selectively inflate certain parts and then deflate other parts Deflating doesn't always work as well as inflating does. We could dynamesh it together as well now. switch to the move tool and just try moving different parts and see if I can make it feel more organic some pinching as well tighten up some of these creases that's feeling pretty intestiny to me
we can also try to put a little bit of noise and if you use noise at different scales and intensities you can test out what it does that just basically adds a little bit of unevenness which may or may not be what we want. I might go keep it subtle. But it's good to add some texture. Trying this out, seeing if I want to really push the texture or not, if it helps. I don't think this does. But that's the best way to do it in ZBrush, is to just actually try things out and see if it works. The more I tweak it, the more gnarly it gets, but honestly I'm finding like it looks better with just simple, simple, simple curves. Yeah, that's basically it for this uh, pretzel. Let's see if y'all have any questions or anything going on. <laughs> Grim Reaper saying another thing I can do with this pretzel is make a negative mold of it for casting and then use it to make chocolate intestine pretzels. That is a genius idea, but I'm too late. It's already Halloween. <laughs> All right, and another question, Eddie six six nine nine, wondering, was the real difference between something like a Form two and an any cubic photon for two fifty nine? Um, so, the question isn't really how different are the printers. The question is how different is the support. Uh, now the supports in the machine, but the support for you as the three D printing uh, artist. So the any cubic printers. Let's see, a Photon, I believe there was a new one that just launched recently too. Very cheap, 250 bucks. Uh, I want to see the build volume. So the build volume, so the scale of it, that's important. It's 115 by 65 by 155 millimeter. The Form 2 build volume, maybe I should be searching Form 3 now, is 145, 145, 175. So it's already going to be much larger because the photon is about you know 65 in its one axis. So it's it's really designed for smaller prints. Uh, but there are other uh, any cubic ones. I believe there's a new one out that is um, bigger. And there's the uh, the Ender printer. There's a lot of cheaper printers that are what I recommend you start with. The thing is, you may not necessarily get the support. Uh, as from a from any cubic as you would from a company as large as Formlabs. I'm also hesitant to back uh, Kickstarter printers. There have been a lot more recently, and I can try to see if I can find some because I had saved them on my uh, wall. Oh, this is great. Here's the uh, Hector outfit done by Sean. So I did the uh, mask for him. 
<laughs> of course, he's got the dog. But this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm psyched about how this turned out. His whole costume is dope. Alright, let me see if I can find those other printers that I can uh, tell you all about. Really, with like this stream, I, I'm, my thing is to just get into ZBrush and make things and, you know, fix things and come up with solutions. It's not really recommending a specific printer or, and, or two, but I do think when you're starting off as a 3D printing artist, it can be really tough and things go wrong and you need to get support. So having some sort of support and forums and structure, that's really useful. All right, so here's some other printers that have been coming out recently. All right, so this one is the Piopoli or Piopoli Phenom SLA printer, massive SLA printer. Uh, this is, you can see it uh, there. There's also another one, the Frozen Transform. Check that out, that's so big. And these were both like Indiegogo and like Kickstarter campaigns to start. Um, and I believe you can, you know, get it uh, without. Let me see, Frozen Transform. It's about less than 2K. And the Piopoli Phenom. Let's see, is that even out yet? Don't see the Piopoli Phenom a price for it. There we go, about 1800. So yeah, just comparatively, these are cheaper than the Forum Labs machines. They're larger in theory, uh, but I don't know if you're gonna get the support you need for when things go wrong. Um, one thing I do recommend if you're not interested in like, you know, getting the supports and you just want to uh, get into 3D printing, I teach a class called 3D Printing for ZBrush Artists online at Mold3D. There we go. So you can take my class, it's basically 200 bucks for eight weeks worth of lectures. You're gonna get to learn everything I know about 3D printing. We cover um, slicing, keying, we cover articulation, jewelry and miniatures to fashion and wearables to large scale sculptures and uh, toys, toy prototyping. So I'll drop that link in the Restream chat and you can check that out. Printing class. Eddie6699 saying, how's the finished surface on the print? I don't know about the Anycubic Photon. The Form 2 and 3 surface is ridiculously smooth. Like you barely see any build lines. In the Form 3 especially so. Uh, Igor Herrero saying, uh, when, do I, when I print, do I reduce polygons or I send the highest detailed mesh to print? So I always reduce polygons. So this, say I'm happy with this and I'm ready to print it. It's 94,000 poly. So what I do is I duplicate it first. Z plugin, decimation master, pre process current, decimate current, and I could say 20%, decimate. And so now that's about 18,000 polys. That's a bit too, too little because I can start seeing striations uh, and faceting. So I don't need it to be 80K, but I think I will reduce it down to 50%. So yeah, about 50K. And that should be fine. Now I'm going to export this. So 3D Print Hub, update size ratios, export as millimeters. And in this one, I don't really care about the scale because I'll adjust the scale depending on the speed it takes to print in my print prep software. So let's call this pretzel, uh, intestine pretzel, save that. Oh wait. I want to make sure that nothing else is visible and that I'm doing export options only for selected. And now I'll do it. Oh, export to STL, not import. Uh-oh. There. Export to STL. All right, 
let's pop that open in Idea Maker and we can take a look. On YouTube, we got Chris Frieza's, uh, Frieza, <laughs> Chris Frieza saying uh, the Prusa MK3 or their new Mini uh, is pretty good, and the Piopoli just released uh, 400 by 400 for 1800. So, a larger printer. I'm I'm happy about this. The more competition there is between printer manufacturers, the better for us, the artists. Okay, and that didn't open for some reason. I'm gonna double click it, make sure it does. Nothing happening, so I'll go into my import, click on it here. There we go. All right, so we've got this pretzel here. We can move it, make sure it's on the platform so it's not like floating or anything like that. Uh, and then we can scale it. So let's make it a bit larger. 200% to start. Move it over to the middle of the machine. And we can try to say slice. And the fastest speed, let's see what it says, how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost. We got uh, S. Anand Narayan on uh, YouTube asking, when I start learning ZBrush, do I need a pen or a tablet for sculpting? So yeah, I'd recommend something. Um, it's hard to do it with a mouse, uh, but uh, you don't need a pen. Uh, you don't need a Cintiq. What I mean is you can use like a tablet. So you can get a cheap bamboo, bamboo tablet or a Wacom and then use that and then later get a Cintiq. So this one's saying nine hours, so that's a bit too long. So I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. So scale, take that down to 150%. Slice that again. So that's about five hours and it's about noon. So if I start printing, it should be done before five. So yeah, I'll go with that size. Call this intestine pretzel. Save that G code. And I'll, this one's easier. I'll pop it into my USB for the printer and save it there too. There we go. Save that G code and then I can use my USB to take it over. Quintonius on YouTube saying, hey, hi, man, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to you as well, mate. All right, so that is exported. It's gonna be about $2 for the print, very cheap, and it should print in about five hours. So yeah, I'm psyched about that. All right, so just once again to recap, Let me turn this volume down, the pretzel, there we go, all right, so once again to recap, I showed you guys a few different things today, we made a little intestine pretzel that I'll print out for a Halloween uh, costume prop tonight, the mask here, the joker mask, put that back on, got to get my hair out of it. Because it's like an elastic band at the back. Yeah. Easiest way is to actually pull the hair up. Put the mask on. And then let the hair drop. So yeah. Happy Halloween. I'm pretty psyched about this. Uh, I just needed to fix the jaw. So I showed you guys uh, how I went about that. Using Booleans and ZBrush to create basically more space under the jaw here so when I move my mouth it'll actually move the jaw <laughs> so yeah 
Pretty psyched about this mask. That's the uh, Halloween costume I'll be wearing tonight. I'm going to like a 3D printing party actually. Uh, Matter Hackers 3D printing party in uh, LA. So I'll check that out. And then the other thing is this cowl I showed y'all. So this is like a two part print that kind of fits on like this. And I'll be fixing this up later today. Sculpted in my last ZBrush stream about uh, a week ago. And I'm pretty psyched about this too. I think this will be a dope uh, thing uh, for my friend Marco. He's going to be rocking this tonight. So yeah, two pieces printed in one go. All of this, like, there's no real reason to recommend one printer over another. But the Ray is the reason I like it is because it can print big stuff. So yeah, there we go. It's cool. I might actually make a staff out of this or something too. All right, so that's it for today's Zebra stream, guys and gals. Thank you all for joining. Uh, once again, my name is Eamon Akhtar. You can follow my work at Eamon 3D uh, and Eamon Akhtar 3D on Instagram. Uh, follow Fungusaurs because that's the project I would really like some support for, at Fungusaurs on Instagram. And that's my little dinosaur mushroom toys, games, animation that we're trying to build. And I recently released a uh, keys and articulation brush on Gumroad. So if you're interested in learning more about you know how to use keys, it's only ten bucks. I'll drop that link in the uh, restream chat. Keys and articulation brush. There we go. So yeah, you can check that out. And I already dropped the link to my class earlier, so you can see that if you're interested. That's the Mold 3D uh, class for 3D printing for ZBrush artists. And uh, yeah, or you could just follow along with my streams. I tend to stream every week or every other week. Uh, the schedule for November should be going up soon and we'll do some more fun projects then. So thanks again for joining. And let me see if there's any other thing. Nope, that's it. All right. Do this, do that. Let's put a smile on that face. See ya.